This is KGW News at Sunrise. Oh, it's a sound we know all too well. And this street racing is scaring some Portland neighbors. We'll hear one woman's story. Plus, we'll tell you what's happening tomorrow to get tough on people involved in this kind of illegal activity. And a warning this morning, scammers are targeting small bands looking for money. And they're using a major publication to make it all seem real. How smart thinking saved one lead singer of a Portland band from falling victim. That's coming up. Hmm. Plus. Well, after a weekend of fantastic finishes and March Madness <laughs> upsets, people's brackets are busted from coast to coast. So here's a question. Has anyone ever filled out a perfect bracket, like picked every game right from start to finish? We put our best people on this topic. Our verified team looks into whether or not that's actually ever happened coming up in just a few I minutes. Almost shut up. I did, me, me, but oh, you really? wouldn't believe me, would you? No, no I you would not. It's not worth <laughs> it. Happy <laughs> Monday, everybody. Spring starts later today. Yeah. This is exciting. Spring. Yes. We weren't here. We were at 68 on Saturday. So wonderful. Now spring is coming, and we're going to be somewhere down in here. Yeah, not it's as exciting good. now. <laughs> I kind of ruined it, didn't I? Here's a look at the radar. We do have showers out there after a wet night. You can see it's definitely and by the way people still ask me occasionally showers what's the difference showers and rain rain would be widespread showers or intermittent or broken areas of rain moving through so you can see that's what we have right now a little dry then wet a little dry then wet here's the uh, view from uh, the pioneer park building downtown portland looking at the uh, courthouse 50 is the temperature so uh, tell you what temperature is not an issue this morning uh, but the problem is we don't think the temperature really does anything all day so showers continue to come and go and basically we're going to sit right around 50 degrees throughout your Monday that vernal equinox the official start of spring 224 this afternoon back to you all right more from Rod coming up here shortly let's get to our top story right now tomorrow Oregon lawmakers will continue their work on a bill that's aimed at increasing the fines and the jail time for people found guilty of organizing street racing events over the weekend there was another street racing takeover in Portland this one happened near the Lloyd Center Mall KGW's Blair Best talked to a woman who watched the entire event unfold from her living room window. It's an alarming sight. Streets blocked and cars doing donuts, burnouts and other stunts, while hundreds of people stand by and watch. Some dangerously close to the action, taunting the drivers on. These videos from Saturday night are easy to find on social media's Snapchat Maps feature. They show just how dangerous illegal sideshows like this can be. Last year, a 26-year-old was hit and killed by a street racer while she was waiting for a bus. I just get so angry at, at the situation what happens. I just go get a slow boil. Claudia lives near the intersection of Northeast 13th and Multnomah, the scene of Portland's latest street takeover Saturday night. Claudia has witnessed more than half a dozen of these since she moved into her Northeast Portland condo 15 years ago. And you can see smoke because there's all kinds of smoke that's let off from the tires that are burning when they're chasing each other in circles. And that's not to mention the noise. To me, it's a, a situation that warrants police action. In the past, Portland police have said it's hard for them to stop street racing due to the number of cars blocking the roads and making it difficult for them to get through. Portland police have not responded to KGW's request for comment on this latest race. I think that it's not good. I think that the police should respond. But it's a volatile situation. One that's even caught the attention of state lawmakers, who proposed a bill last month to make laws tougher for those who organize street races and takeover events. There will be a work session on that bill on Tuesday. Claudia has also written to state senators demanding action. If a stronger law will be enforced more um, uh, consistently, then yeah, let's do that. Blair Best, KGW News. Other headlines this morning, a longtime Portland police employee and her husband will be in court this morning. Officers arrested the couple on Friday, almost two years after the body of 58 year old Jack Decker was found on the sidewalk near Providence Park. Also on Friday, PPB confirmed Decker died from homicidal violence. 
Bruce Chur faces manslaughter and assault charges. His wife, Karen Chur, was an administrative supervisor for PPB for 28 years. She's charged with hindering prosecution, official misconduct, and tampering with physical evidence. ODOT has lowered the speed limit on Hall Boulevard in Tigard to improve safety for drivers and pedestrians and cyclists. It's now 30 miles an hour, down from 40. The change is between Southwest Faffel Street, right behind Costco, and 92nd Avenue. Operations at SeaTac Airport are back to normal this morning after a piece of unattended luggage caused backups and delays yesterday. Police evacuated the Alaska Airlines check-in counter where the bag was found. SeaTac also shut down the departures lane outside the terminal and funneled all traffic through arrivals. After almost three hours, the luggage was determined to be harmless. And those are some of your Monday morning headlines. Oregon lawmakers are considering a bill that would increase penalties for people who deal fentanyl or simply get caught with the drug. District attorneys across the state say this bill would close a dangerous loophole and make mandatory treatment a top option. Here's KGW's Tim Gordon with more. There is plenty of debate about Oregon's voter-approved Measure 110, which decriminalized low-level drug possession even for hard drugs. But in the midst of a fentanyl epidemic, lawmakers are considering closing a gap that allows for possession of up to five grams of fentanyl before it's even a misdemeanor. I think it's an absolute crisis. Um, it is everywhere within your community. Dan Primus is the top prosecutor in rural Umatilla County and president of the Oregon District Attorneys Association, which supports House Bill 2645, aimed at breaking the grip of fentanyl. In Umatilla County, with a population of 80,000, Primus says law enforcement seized a record 72,000 pills containing fentanyl last year and are on track to break that record in 2023, having already seized 54,000 pills. It's something that we're seeing a steady increase of, and obviously we're seeing the consequence of it with the loss of life throughout the state. We want to save lives, period. And this is a step towards how do we help do that. At a committee hearing this week in Salem, lawmakers talked about the bill, which would make possession of from one to five grams of fentanyl a misdemeanor and anything more a felony. It also makes mandatory treatment a provision for offenders charged with possession. And that's really kind of the hope as well, is to see what we can do about uh, assisting individuals with treatment and going through the treatment process because we know that that is a that is a gap there's a gap there as well. House Bill 2645 also sets penalty levels for pills containing fentanyl because that is the form it comes in most of the time. For those dealing the deadly drug, that means there could be tougher penalties treating fentanyl dealers the same as heroin dealers in court. You want to prevent those that are that are that are supplying and and, and quite frankly killing those within your community with this addiction issue. And that's this bill allows for that as well. Tim Gordon, KGW News. Oregon lawmakers are also discussing a new bill offering incentives to homeowners to invest in a heat pump. Senate Bill 868 is part of the package to make buildings more energy efficient. It would help people maximize incentives and rebates to offset the price of their heat pumps. Heat pumps are the fastest and increasingly becoming the cheapest way to get both heating and cooling fast. And I think at the end of the day, when we talk about this crisis, that's not something we can address 10 years from now. There are things we have to start doing today. The bill sponsors want to see another half million heat pumps in Oregon homes by 2030. And they say they're optimistic that this entire package of bills will pass. We're going to follow that story with a quick reminder that you can let us know about stories that you think we should cover either by calling or texting us. You can use that number right there on your screen, 503-226-5088. I had such a case of spring fever on Saturday. I'm telling you, it's the first thing we talked about on our morning call and then boom. Yeah, 68. It was way. amazing. Surpassed how warm I thought. I had 65, I think, on the forecast. It went 68. And then I had all these uh, comments on social media. Is it okay to start planting now? And oh. it's like, hold on. <laughs> <laughs> In fact, I like our chances of seeing freezing temperatures well into April this year. Wow. Yeah. I don't like your like. 
Right. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't like my like either. Okay, here's a look at our uh, our timing headlines. Spring local time. This is the day. The Vernal Equinox 224 this afternoon. By the way, Portland had their uh, so-called 12 and 12 day last Friday when we had equal amounts of daylight and darkness. We think of the changing of the, the fall and spring season as being 12 and 12, but the earth is not a perfect circle, so it doesn't work out perfectly. 714, the sun up today, sun going down 723, so we are already getting more daylight than darkness. And of course, we're picking up about three minutes, give or take, of uh, daylight every single day from this point all the way into uh, June. All right, here's what's going on. We have uh, rain showers scattered up and down the west. No big organized areas of precipitation, but you can see some bright colors. There's some off uh, shore from Long Beach. There are some heavier rain pockets kind of mixed in. There's a heavier shower north of Battleground moving up uh, around Mount St. Helens into the uh, Cascades. Temperature is not an issue. In fact, downtown Portland is at 50 degrees right now. Here are the other numbers. Everybody's well up into the 40s. Eugene 46, Newport 45. Uh, a little cooler out in the gorge, but still not bad. The Dallas 38 and even above freezing and burns in Baker City at 36 degrees this morning. All right, future cast. Basically just scattered showers, cloudy skies, kind of a typical day for us. Southwest breezes 10 to 20 miles per hour. I noticed the flags on the bridges moving pretty good this morning when I came in. Here we are at one o'clock. Again, some embedded heavier showers, but I really don't think we have anything stormy today. Um, six o'clock showers continuing now, overnight tonight. The rain chance ends and tomorrow looks mainly dry. Some morning fog pockets, a spotty shower chance primarily near the mountains tomorrow in the valley. I like our chances of, of just being quiet. Check this out. 3,000 foot snow level today, 4,500 tomorrow. By Thursday, there's a good cold front Thursday, 1,500 feet. And by Friday, we could be looking at snow in the Metro Hills. Snow levels back down to about 500 feet. Temperatures back to today with the scattered showers and some snow showers out east. Only in the 30s at 4 p.m. in Burns and John Day, Baker City 41. Mix of showers this morning over in Central Oregon too, but later today, Ben 45. All right, so tomorrow 60. Woo! Wednesday 60. Woo! Thursday 52. Friday. Hmm. Maybe a snowflake to be found. Oh goodness. my goodness. What the heck is that? What is that right there? <laughs> a flake? He looks sheepish. <laughs> All right, here's Devin Haskins. Uh, local band. <laughs> Sorry, Devin. No, <laughs> that's okay. We're talking about coming up after the break. We're talking about a local band that received an offer that seemed uh, like a great opportunity for exposure. You know, do you want to have us do a piece or an article for you in Rolling Stone magazine? And I was like, oh my God, okay, this is actually, this is actually real. This is actually taking on something solid. That offer turned out to be a scam. And he's not the only one to receive that message. How his smart thinking saved him from becoming a victim and what a major publication is telling musicians.